Hi, so let's further think about some more resources and see how the power converter can be optimized in those applications. Let's look at the wind power right here. You have your wind turbine, you have a gearbox, you have a generator, you have power converter and ultimately feeding to the load or the grid, right? Typical efficiencies for your wind turbine is 40%, uh, gearbox would be 88%, generator would be 98%, power converter would typically be 95%, yeah, because we're talking about something like one megawatt. <laughs> one megawatt of power. Right, so in that range, your typical power converter efficiencies are in the upwards of 95% because you don't want to lose that higher power. Uh, the cost corresponding for the blades, uh, etc., would be something like 60%. Blades plus tower, it's a huge cost compared to the balance of system, which is like 30%. And power converter is roughly 10% of the cost. Now, in this case, if you want to understand which power converter to use. Let's say in the market you have two options, 95% or 96% efficiency, right? And that leads to a higher cost also. So in that case, which converter to choose, 95% one or 96% one? Yeah, let's say they both have a different amount because you have 10% cost coming from the power converter. How do you make sure the cost of energy is again optimized? Because when the efficiency is higher, your electrical energy produces higher. When the efficiency is higher, then your cost is also higher, right? So would the cost of energy increase or decrease? It totally depends on what converter you're choosing. So this is an optimization question you can ask yourselves by considering the off-the-shelf power converters that are available for wind systems in the range of one megawatt. Yeah, you can even see this for lower ones, depending on what scenario are you talking about, a centralized or a distributed generation. Talking about a diesel genset here, again, the same question would apply. Yeah, what power converter to choose? Now, there is something very subtle here that choosing a better power converter, which gives you a higher efficiency, can reduce your cost of energy. But these power converters, which have higher efficiency, typically come with added features. For example, for a solar converter, you have maximum power point tracking. Right? That gives you so much more power compared to a conventional controller that your T or the power that you're producing becomes many fold and cost of energy changes dramatically. So having a smart converter can really impact the cost that you're talking about and the overall system efficacy becomes very high. Similarly, for a wind system, when the power converter can operate at variable frequency, so it can operate the entire system at variable speed, then the efficiency becomes very high. Yeah, it becomes even higher than what you can see here at 60% or 30%, I'm sorry, 40% or 88%. Because you have variable drives in the system in the power converter, the overall system efficiency can really go up. And then even if your wind uh, blade size is smaller, you can save on a lot of chunk of cost. So by adding a little more cost here, which is just 10% of your the system cost can reduce a lot of cost from the blade and the tower perspective if you are getting more energy from the same wind by reducing the size of the blades and tower. So there's another level of optimization that goes behind what smarts are sitting inside your converter, your power converter. Similarly, for a diesel genset, when you have a power converter which can have variable frequency drive, variable frequency operation, again, you can, you can prevent a lot of mechanical losses in the system. The age of the diesel genset can be really high if you have a power converter which can operate at a variable frequency, variable speed. So how do you choose a power converter that also think, uh, also impacts a lot about what smarts, what controls are sitting inside the power converter? Another example I would want to give is for a solar system where you have module-based inverters where one PV panel has its own small microinverter, or do you want to have a central string inverter where three PV panels connected together have, a, have one controller, one power converter? In both the cases, what are your cost of energies you can compare? So with that, I would like you to think about different resources, wind, solar, diesel gensets, and design your optimum systems with an optimized power converter, thinking about its cost of energy and net present value. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.